Hello everyone and welcome to another Wednesday and another wonderful chance to hear what Spirit has to say about flexing our creative power. So this month I was guided to connect with various souls who incarnated during particular lifetimes here on the earth. Last week was the strong feminine Sappho, an ancient Greek poet who wrote all sorts of love poetry, and oh boy, she was a wonderfully strong-minded individual. And this week, you'll notice I'm sitting in a little bit of a different location. That's because for this particular soul, I wanted to be by my piano in just acknowledgement for the fact that piano was a huge part for this soul's particular lifetime. And the individual I'm speaking of is best known as Nanarol Mozart. It was her nickname, <laughs> Nanarol. And she was the elder sister of the famous Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Who, for those of you who maybe have heard the name Mozart but aren't entirely sure, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was a Austrian composer who lived in the 1700s. And he had an older sister who was just as talented, just as much of a prodigy as he was, although not quite. She had to work a little bit more. And being female in the 1700s added a whole other level of challenges for her in that lifetime. Not to mention, she's the elder sister of Wolfgang, who becomes absolutely famous even as a child. Both of them were quite well known as children. They were performing to all sorts of nobility and royalty from a very young age. Their father was extremely strict. He was also a musician. and really, really pushed both of them to become absolutely perfect at their music. And both of them were also encouraged to compose from a young age as well. However, Nanaro being a girl, there came a point in her life when her father insisted that she stop composing, that she stop playing piano, because for society at that time, for a woman to be able to be well set for the rest of her life, she needed to get married. And in order to get married, a woman had to present a particular image. And her father was very insistent that being a composer, being a pianist, even though by that time she was also just teaching piano, she wasn't even publicly performing anymore, she had to stop all of that and allow society to disconnect who she was as a woman from her previous self as the composer and pianist and elder sister to Wolfgang. So I was really excited when she stepped forward as someone who wished to offer us some guidance about our own creative power and our own past, particularly considering 
the freedoms we have now are so different and so much more open than there were back then. Compared to Sappho, as I call her in, Nanarul has a much more calm and controlled presence. She's very stately. And she says, Hello. It is wonderful to connect with each of you who are living in such a vibrant and exciting time. I watch each of you and I am so excited to see where all of you are going, where all of you are taking each other. I wish to speak upon four matters today. The first matter that I wish to address to each of you is that of the perception of perfection, that of the struggle, the constant race. that is centered around this notion. There is no need to be perfect. And that is why when you focus upon it, it becomes a struggle. What you should focus upon is your heart and letting your heart sing and letting your heart flow. In my lifetime, as Nanarol, I was taught about perfection and how that was the state that myself that all of society must achieve. It was a must. We had to. There was no other option other than achieving perfection. To not achieve perfection would to be less than. And so I spent much of my lifetime constantly chasing it, comparing myself to my brother comparing myself to what my father wanted of me, comparing myself to what I wanted, to what society wanted. And I always fell short, except in the moments when I played my music. When I played my music, when I let myself be lost in the notes, although even then I followed the structures and the patterns of music of that time, I kept to the rigid formulas But my expression, the way I let my fingers touch the keys, and how, in the moments when I played, there was only me and the sounds that were created. There were no expectations until I might look up to the side or finish the piece and see something that reminded me. You all live in a time where there is no need to be one way. 
you do not need to present yourself in one particular way in order to live comfortably, in order to have a family, in order to pursue that which you wish to pursue. All you must do is lose yourself to your heart. Do not think. Do not judge. Do not compare. Lose yourself to your heart. I encourage each of you to do what I did not quite achieve in my lifetime, and that is to take joy from mistakes, to encourage yourself not to be perfect, but to be imperfect, to encourage yourselves to make mistakes, to not follow the beat of a particular piece of sheet music, to hold a note a little bit too long, to play it a little bit too fast, to play two wrong notes and keep going anyway. For when you create with imperfection, you are being most true to your heart, to your energy in that moment. You are not suppressing it, ignoring it, pretending it does not exist. You are letting it out. You are being just as you are. The second matter that I wish to speak upon is creation. Many of you may hear my words and feel that you cannot create the way that I created, cannot create the way that others in your time, in this moment, create. You may not even see yourself as creative. But again, I stress to each of you, look outside of the lines. Look beyond that which is on the page of your society, of your perception. For creation comes in many forms. This was part of one of my lessons in my lifetime as Nanaro. For when I gave up my music to marry and to have children, I discovered down that path the great joys that came from creating life from supporting life, from building a family. And although many of my joys were small things, they were a smile here and there that I caused, a laugh that I encouraged, a bit of decoration that I chose for my house. But they were mine. Those moments were encouraged, they were created by me.
do not undermine the things that you create. Instead, open your eyes, open your heart, open your ears. Be wide open and aware to each thing that you create. For you do not need a skill to create. Again, simply just being, just living, and you are creating. Each thought that passes through your mind is a creation that is added to the energy upon this earthly plane. The third matter that I wish to speak upon is that which is tied up around perfection, creation, and that is a fame. Many feel that fame is where one must go when chasing a skill, when creating a piece of art, a speech. And no, just as perfection is as fleeting as an eighth note, as quick, there and gone, so too is fame. And to call yourself a creator, to call yourself successful, you do not need fame. I experienced it as a child. And then it was taken as I grew older and I grew more and more into my brother's shadow. I saw the path my brother went down and although you see him as famous now. He struggled and he was not often happy for his path led him to be isolated, led him to be alone. And that is where in my lifetime as Nanaro, I came to be grateful for what my father demanded of me when he said to let go of my music, to stop it, so that I could marry. For I found great joy and pleasure more in the simple moments of the family I had created than that of the clapping and the smiles, the accolades, the praise of my father when I was a child performing for royalty. Know that you and only you can define your success. The last matter that I wish to address is that of dreams and goals and desires that we all have in my lifetime. I went through many, 
some. We're fed by the society I was surrounded by. The nobility who clapped and laughed at my skill, my brother's skill. Watching what the men around me could do, the paths they went on as musicians. And then how I saw my family, how I wished for it to be, the man I would marry. These all flit in and flit out quickly, like a glissando running up and down the keyboard. And they ran together. But we're never quite what I wanted. And to this, I ask each of you to turn within yourselves And perhaps you too may have dreams and goals and wishes and desires that have been influenced by that which is outside of you. It does not make them wrong to follow, to want or to desire, but acknowledge them. Address whether they are that which brings you joy. And if they are not, if they are that which you have been chasing and chasing, and you have experienced struggle after struggle, it may be the path to pursue, or it may not. For struggle is what we come here to learn from. But if the dream, if the goal is true with you, it brings you joy, then follow it. And if you do not know what is your dream and what is society's dream, if you do not know yourself, then Let yourself dream. Put yourself into a dreaming state. And create. Pull what is in your mind and put it out. Without expectation. This may be tossing paint onto a canvas. It may be singing little ditties and melodies as they come into your mind. It may be walking up, down, back and forth and everywhere, every day. Whatever it is that lets you just be. Full of imperfection 
and mistakes. Seek that out. Cherish it. For the lifetimes experienced here on the earthly plane are not to achieve dreams. They are to learn lessons. She's just given me a curtsy <laughs> and I said those were the matters that I wished to address today and thank you dear one she's speaking to me for allowing me to come forth and share my thoughts and experiences For I am watching with great excitement all that each of you is creating. Wow. All right. <laughs> that was amazing. So with that, I wish all of you a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. And I will be seeing you back here next Wednesday, although I will be coming live on Saturday to connect with the wonderful magic of the mermaids. So keep an eye out for that. And love and light to you all. Goodbye for now.